Happy Tuesday, everybody. It is Tracy here, your friendly neighborhood paper pusher. <clears throat> Ooh, I'm so excited. I actually remembered to mute my computer before I went on. So look how good I'm doing. Um, I just wanted to come on and like wave and say hello to everybody. And, and then I'm going to turn this camera off <laughs> because I have tried and I've made my other camera work. And yet, as soon as I go live with you guys, it somehow decides it's just too much and it doesn't want to work. So I just wanted to say hi, and then I was going to turn it off <laughs> because I'm going to go with like minimal. I've closed every other app. I have done everything I can think of to make it so that this camera will not freeze halfway through the middle of what I'm trying to show you. <laughs> Hello, Dana. Oops, I'm kicking stuff under the desk. Uh, I, Dan, I think this might be your first time here. Welcome. Oh, you, you picked a good day because uh, I have such a fun card to show you. And we're going to see it look totally different, I think, by the time we're done. Um, and I have some little updates to show. And so here we go. I got the wrong screen now. Just one second. <laughs> oh, can't be totally perfect. Where'd be the fun in that? All right. So we're still live. Whoa. I've just turned off my camera. Okay. So here's the quick rundown before we get to the card. I'll give you, uh, here, I'll give you the teaser. Move this out of the way. This is the card we're making. Ooh, we're not making it with rainbows though. I, I gotta tell you though, I love this. Um, <laughs> sometimes that I don't know if catching me live is a good thing or not, because every now and again, it goes into a like, total like off the rails, but that's okay. It's always entertaining. I'm, I'm entertained, so maybe I need something else might be. So yes, this is, and, and I I put the actual name for it in my in, like in the little calendar when I said what this class was. But the person who I saw make a similar version of this card called it the triple layer double pop-up unique gold card, <laughs> which I think is a fantastic name. But the but the fun part is it does stand up. And so when I saw these, see these nice little spots in here, I envisioned somehow putting sides on here, like making them into boxes and having like a desk organizer with a calendar and some posted notes and so stay tuned that's coming but this the, the card originally went this way um but then i saw somebody switch it this way and the best part is it folds flat and goes in an envelope still so you can still mail it to somebody and then when they get it they get to you know do a little open it up adjust it boop. so stay tuned because that's the fun card we're making today but in the meantime let me give you the quick recap um I was going to say based on my, on my, like all the results that came in when I asked in the last newsletter, but I only got one answer. But as it turns out, the one answer was the one I wanted it to be. So we're going with that. Um, I am going to switch my newsletter to just being bi-weekly and then just send out the little bulletins in between if something new comes up. Um, I didn't want to miss out. There's like Stampin' Up's got so much stuff going on and they're introducing new things. And, and I wanted to make sure that everybody knew about them when they could because with our dreaded supply chain. Um, sometimes if you're not quick enough, you miss out on stuff uh, or it just takes too long to get here and you get it eventually. It's just not when you need it. Uh, but I think we've, I think we've sort of got that under control a bit now. Um, a lot of stuff now we're planning, you know, into the distance. So I'm going to, I'm going to try it bi-weekly and see so that you're not inundated with stuff. Sorry, I hope you can't hear me sip on TV, but I've also decided I'm going to try to like have a drink while I do this. Okay, so my camera does keep freezing, but then it pops back. So, <laughs> hmm, waking up and hard to hear. I tried to get my IT department, that being my 13 year old son, to help me figure out why I bought a brand new iPad last summer when I retired. That was my retirement gift from the government. And it worked absolutely fine for like months using it. And then and all of a sudden it, it started being glitchy and it's doing it again, it's freezing up. But we can't figure out why, because it's like on my iPad at home when it freezes on the screen, my iPad is still running and it's still live and I can see it. Um, the other camera when it's turned on still works, the sound still works. It's just somehow what's live here is freezing in one chunk of it on there. And I feel like we can't figure it out either for teeth. So my solution is go really fast and hope you can get through everything before 
before the time's out. I know that's not the best solution, um, but I'm gonna try. So yeah, celebration. There's, it only runs till the 20th of February, so there's only a, a couple weeks left. This is, this is my summary. Multiples of 60 gets your free stuff if you're buying. If you and your friends all wanna combine your orders or you wanna just spend a lot on your own, that's fine. And your order goes over 375, you get the common camellia stamp set for free. And it's an awesome set. And I should have brought it in one of these times, I'll think to show you. Or if you just wanna join up and get the starter kit, which you don't have to be a business demonstrator. You can just be a hobby demonstrator who gets a really good deal and lots of free stuff. Because I will tell you how to get the free stuff because I have mastered getting the free stuff. Um, in this case, though, in, in addition to paying $135 flat rate um, for uh, probably about $300 worth of stuff, that includes two extra stamp sets that you get to pick. So best deal hands down. But time is of the essence on this one. Um, the next paper pumpkin has been announced. And um, oh, here, look, I didn't write anything on here. This marks ninth birthday of paper pumpkin. You know what that means? Free stamp set. So each March they do something. Um, and in this case, it's a free stamp set. So there's two big things about this. This um, little backdrop picture here is the one that they give you. So this coordinates with the horizon paper, which is the paper we're gonna use on the card today. Um, I showed you one with rainbow, but we're gonna switch it up to the horizon. This paper is amazing. Um, I've made other cards with it and other things with it. it it's absolutely amazing. So it's gonna coordinate with this, which is good. It also means there's gonna be a run on the other paper is my prediction, but, um, and then you get a stamp set. And I, I watched a demonstrator get, you know, advanced notice and, and we get to see things that, um, that you guys don't, you have to wait for. So I've seen a, like the lady held up a, the stamp set and I know it's got some big floral pictures in it. So this picture that they've included in some of the publications shows like these really pretty watercolored flowers and leaves. Pretty sure that's from the bonus stamp set. So you'll get one stamp set, like a normal, it makes what did I write down here? Nine cards and envelopes. Um, that coordinates to this. And then in addition, there's just gonna be another, and it's a big stamp set. Like when she held it up, it was a good size stamp set. Um, <clears throat> and in it somewhere is these pretty flowers. And yeah, sentiments, it says, somewhere I read that. Thanks, thinking of you. Happy birthday. I think it's in like all occasion type stuff. Um, so, and as we had mentioned before, Prices go up on the 1st of March. So if you want to lock in this year's price, um, you can get three, six or 12 month subscriptions. I'll also get you some free celebration stuff. Uh, the, the 12 month subscription will also get you like free product, which means you can stock up on this gorgeous paper. Um, <laughs> and there's just lots going on, but yeah, if you want to lock in your prices, if you do the month to month coming March 1st, you're just going to pay the month to month pr price, which is including tax and everything is 32 50. Um, but if you want to, uh, if you want to get the prepaid, you can lock it in at this price. And when you get a 12 month subscription, you're actually only paid for 11 months. So 11 months at the lower price bonus, um, this altogether suite that came out. Um, we had talked about this briefly before. Let's see my picture has frozen again. And this time it's not unfreezing. A minute. I'm doing the very risky stop and start of the camera to see if that helps. Uh, I'm always afraid it's never going to come back on. So, oh, it worked this time. Let's see what happens. Okay, so this, uh, we had talked about this stamp set. So, this stamp set, or this suite of products, I guess, is a stamp set. The paper, which is black and white and has lots of colorable images on it. This cool set of dyes, and then this set of 10 blends. I love blends and coloring with blends. So this altogether collection, these neutrals, are meant to give a wider range of skin tones. Um, there's already a, a few colors you can get just in the regular color tree, but these are specific to being that. Um, it also gives you extra colors for your animals. And um, I saw a lady had colored a card um, with all of these different tones, and it had kind of a sepia look, like an old fashioned look, so it's very cool. But nonetheless, very popular. These blends, which to get all 10 of them is 61.25, which will get you a free celebration thing as well. So I think people are taking advantage of that. Um, these are slightly better pictures. So just the rest of the stuff seems to be okay. And it's, it's available right now. Um, these blends are about to sell out. 
And um, Stamp It Up has been warning us and warning us they're about to sell out. A couple of the sets were already on low inventory. So if they sell out, these are gonna be in the annual catalog, the, not, not the paper. Uh, the stamp set and the dies will, the paper will not, uh, uh, but these blends will. But that just means that if they sell out right now, which they kind of expect in the next week or so they're going to, it means they're not gonna be available again until the second of May when the new annual catalog comes out. They have more ordered. The order is just taking its time getting here because dreaded supply chain. So yeah, if you're interested in these blends, <clears throat> Um, let me know. My, I, I waited and then I was like, no, I better not wait. I was waiting to see how many people wanted to do a class. Um, and I ordered and I'm actually, I'm, I'm like half looking at what I'm doing and I keep looking out the window because my UPS guy, Mr. UPS guy, as I call him, is uh, expected today. And one, I'm waiting to see what he does with the note and Valentine sheet that I left on the front step for him. Um, but also I'm so excited because he's bringing me my order today, which has my blends in it and has some stuff in it. I'm, I'm very excited about all of what's in it. Um, this was the other new suite that came out. That's a sneak peek. Uh, this paper is also selling very well because it's gorgeous. Um, but these, these, the stamp set and dies will also be in the annual catalog in May, but the, the designer paper, the foils and these will not, and they are, just like stunning the stuff you can see made with them. So these ones right now only demonstrators can order, but starting on the 1st of March, customers can order. So if you want to get in on that, let me know and I will be poised to make an order on the 1st of March. Uh, one of the things I'm most excited about, and that it is not, certainly not the fact that my camera keeps freezing, that's really annoying me. Okay, I kind of wonder when the camera freezes now because it's the only thing going, is the sound still going? Uh, yeah, one of the things I'm most excited about coming in this box today is the magnet board. And I really hoped I'd have it now because I could show you and I could show you how cool it was. It, and it's good, it's a good size, like it's 12 by 12. I'm showing you the picture with my hands, but it's so big it's not in the screen. Um, <laughs> but I also wanted to show you my little like add-on idea because I'm very excited about it. I'm very excited about customizing it monthly. So this one, I, at the end of February, I plan to have a virtual class. We can you know, hang up, put it together, share ideas. Oh, thank you, Dana. And um, it's very frustrating. I'm kind of hoping that, that the replay might be better, but I have no choice but to kind of power through because I, this is not on the camera. Um, yeah, I, I might try for a, a together like end of March, like an in-person version of this, but I'm very excited to get started on this one. And then I think this is my last little, <laughs> my last little tidbit. <laughs> yep is our uh, spring extravaganza. And you will notice it is two thirds sold out. So the important part of this though, and I've, I've, I've updated the poster with more information and I'm gonna be setting this out tomorrow. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> I appreciate you sticking in there. Um, I've updated so you can see some like sneak peeks of the projects we're making. So we're making two full-size greeting cards, a couple treat containers, a gift box, which you can either put the note cards in or just give on its own and five note cards, note cards all of which are mailable in the tulip suite and then also same thing two greeting cards two treat containers um, a mini paper pumpkin box and five note cards in the sports fan suite and I, I gotta tell you i love these suites i had so much fun with this one i have a so many samples like you see this picture here so many samples because i just kept making and making and making um, and you get like all the consumables so you get a, like two packs of paper and some ribbon and some twine and some embellishments and so you'll have you'll be able to make all of this stuff and you can customize your own paper each on each project you get to choose which of your papers you want to use and then um you have leftovers so you can make more stuff at home if you want and that's why you can take like pictures and um so if you want to do more crafting later you can for for my customers though i wanted to let you know that this so we're doing we have the option to do mother's day and father's day cards and projects in here uh, but you can also switch it up to say happy Easter if you need a couple things that say Easter or happy birthday or thank you. So you have lots of options in here. And this is probably the only live thing I will be doing between now and probably mid to end of May other than the magnet board if there's enough interest. So if you need your Mother's Day, Father's Day, stock up on some birthday thank you cards, um, this is the best chance to do it. And you'll have a ton of stuff when you're done. And it's a beautiful downtown Mormville. So there we go. Let me know if you have questions on any of those fun things. Now, Back to the fun card. Uh, seriously, addicted to this rainbow paper. 
<clears throat> it's one of the celebration items and I've stocked up a little bit on it. Um, I've mentioned before, there's lots of like symbolic rainbow things you can do. Uh, rainbow babies, rainbow bridge, uh, rainbow support. But it, right now, I think I am just gravitating towards the happy, cheerful, bright colors of it. And my favorite paper of all is this, this navy one with the little rainbows on it. I, just, just the colors, I don't know. I would normally not like get all excited about this color pink. I do love granny apple green, I'll tell you that. But, um, but the whole combination, I just love them. So here's the thing. I, and my, I think that was on Monday, did I say that? Um, this card looks much harder than it is, right? Like it folds up nice, fits in an envelope, pop it up, stand it on your desk. So cool. It's actually quite simple to make. And I have pre-cut the stuff just so we can uh, finish one today and you can see what I'm talking about. Now, when I went to cut the papers, and I will show you, this is like slightly neater. Um, okay, so funny, funny story there. I think it was last week, my good friend Tamara, made a, or maybe it was a couple weeks ago, she made one of the versions of the card going this way. And her, and in the actual version of the card, they're both one inch squares here, right? And she said she had seen it on, the demonstrator's like website was called Iced Images. And she saw it and it was all in centimeters because I believe the lady is from Europe. And, and actually maybe German. Um, and so she took it and she kind of adapted it and she made it work so that it would, it would, um, be an inches per because we even though we're metric in Canada we tend to craft in inches. Um, so she made a card and it was gorgeous. It was like pre oh, beautiful. So she had done that. So then, sometime on the weekend, I had been doing some stuff online and the stuff finished and timed out. And the next video that came up and it was about the third or fourth time it came out was a demonstrator from the states and she was talking about this card and I finally just let it play. Right, I had seen the start starting couple minutes of it. So I let it play. So then I saw that she was looking at this and she didn't like that it kept falling over. And it was her husband that said, we'll just turn it sideways. So the funny part though, is when she said she saw it, she said, so I saw this lady, iced images, hers was in centimeters, I had to adapt it. So she had almost the same like starting story as Tamara, only, hi Tamara, um, only she had, she shifted it instead of adapting it and making it work better on the side. She, thanks to her husband's comment, she made it work this way. And she did hers in rainbows, one of the samples in rainbows, and then she did one as a Valentine sample. So then I took what she showed me and I said, well, that's great. But I was a little more in the version she did. These were like, this was much taller and this was a little bit wider. And I was like, no, I want to be able to like kind of waterfall this way and waterfall this way. And I was very particular about it being more symmetrical. So I took that version and then I changed it. So we're on like the fourth incarnation of the same card that so obviously it was a very popular blog post a little while ago but anyways it i i love it i love it in the rainbows and we're going to try to see what it looks like in totally different paper so this other paper i was talking about is the horizon paper now i remember when i did my catalog launch i showed you it and at the risk of never getting it in the bag again I'm going to take it up. So first off, you see all these little scraps because I keep making all these cards with it and cutting big chunks out because it, it looks so, so good in a big chunk. I mean, look at that. It's just right for the scenery. So if this is the paper, I'm going to go really fast and see what happens. And it's very scenic and it's just beautiful watercolors. And whichever one you pick, like you see a scene and then you just, oh, it's gorgeous. But do not fear if you do the same thing as me. Because one of my favorite cards I have made in like recent time is this card. And when I made this card, I actually took a strip. And so this belongs down here and this belongs up here. And I just sort of trimmed them up and offset them. So all these little scraps are still going to make, like this paper is just, even in small little pieces, oh, it's just amazing. So well, I forgot to tell you about this. Remind me at the end if I'm still thinking about it, I'll tell you about that. I had that up too, but forgot. Okay, so then I took some paper. I decided I was going to make it. And I took this paper, and I, this is one of my favorite pieces. <laughs> and I couldn't decide if I wanted to make it in uh, pale papaya or evening evergreen. So either the, so you can see, and so I got all the pieces pre-cut just to so make things quicker. Um, so you can see that if I make a card, I keep going too far, huh? this way, it has sort of a different feel than if you put it on the darker color. Maybe I should mix and match. Ooh. So I couldn't decide, so I cut both pieces. 
And I and I just thought, I'm just gonna see. So I'm actually gonna ask and I'm gonna make whichever one you tell me to make. But wh which one do you think is the better color to make this card on? Pale papaya or evening evergreen? A vote now while I take a sip of my tea, which is currently stuck to the poster and getting the grief. There we go. I'm trying to be patient because I know there's a delay. Okay, so two people vote and you both vote me off what the other one does. So, that was my fear. And I only got one set of paper uh, or one set of the DSP. Um, well, you know what? I, I'm going to go with the one I wanted to go with first and just see what happens. And then I, I might have to, oh, no, Dan, I changed your mind. Okay, we're going with evening of the uh, I might have to make something else with this paper because now I'm curious. But okay, so I'm going to put this together. I'm going to show you how I did it and put it together. Whatever the question, the answer is always evergreen. I know I want evergreen to never go away. The fact that it's an in color, which means it could potentially go away, is is you know it's almost like it's borderline traumatizing. The idea that we may not have it one day. Okay, so now that I knocked my stuff over, I do not have. Okay, so this is one of the things when you cut your pieces, you want to keep them in order. It's not going to really make a difference. But. Okay, so I cut my DSP and I cut all my card stuff. Now, this is all the instructions. I'll cry. Yeah, me too. Um, all the instructions are in my blog. This is basically my version. This is the cleaned up version because when I when I took, I had notes from Tamara's version and then I had notes from Donna. It was Donna Griffiths was the lady that had made the the rainbow version had this version and then I wrote on my own version and then when I went to make the samples of the card I kept switching back and forth between the two of them so yeah so it became this slightly neater version so that will be translated into the blog with some pictures for you well there you go I will make I will make another one and take pictures of it with the pale papaya and then you'll be able to see on the on the blog so it, it's very simple like I said it looks complex it is not so complex once we've cut these pieces of paper, and that's what I'll give you the measurements. This one is, uh, if you're taking notes, four and a quarter by eight and 15 sixteenths. So what is eight and 15 sixteenths and why? So this is basically a nine, nine inch piece of paper and you're gonna cut one sixteenth off. So a sliver or a tick as Tamara would call it. And the reason you're gonna do that <clears throat> is because when this all folds up, this is the problem with evening evergreen. As much as I love this color, you can't always see it, it's dark. When this folds up, you want when you want to fold this, you want, you want to be able to fold it just shy of this score line. Because if you're shaving off that 116th when you fold this up, it will fold much neater. Okay, so that's the reason we're doing that. So four and a quarter, and this is just a little bit shorter than a, a normal card, because the original one, like I said, it was another, I think it was a half an inch taller, but that made the one layer, like to me, noticeably taller. Uh, if you cut them wrong, your lives turn into the worst life ever. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, actually, I do remember that. It wasn't the worst life ever, though, Tamara. It was just, it's more entertaining. And I will tell you, if you could see the pieces of scrap paper I have, I had just bought a package of, side note, squirrel, um, a package of Evening Evergreen. And I went to grab a full sheet of it. And I was like, why do I not have a piece of Evening Evergreen? Like, why did I, where did I, did I go through an entire package already? And then yesterday, as I was cleaning up and doing some rearranging in here, I had all my scraps. I had just kept throwing them in a pile. And when I pulled that out, I probably had a half a package of Evening Evergreen in various sizes because I do remember making a different card. And, um, and I, I, I don't know how many times I cut it, but I kept cutting it wrong. So I just kept throwing them aside thinking I'll use them for something else. So I probably had a half a package of the wrong cut. Your lives are always fun, Tamara. Um, and it's good to see that not everything is perfect the first try. I mean, we're all people. We all make mistakes. We all do things wrong or just not pay attention because we're doing other things and take things on backwards, upside down. Oh, I've done it all. Um, people just tend to clean things up for their lives. So back to what I was saying. Let's see. I'm a squirrel. Mm -hmm. Yes. So basically, we're going to cut this and we're going to score it four times to make this box. Now, the trick I'm going to tell you for this well actually there's two tricks <laughs> it will make your life a lot easier if you put this piece of dsp down before you fold the square up because then you'll put squishing it 
get me crafted like a like a rebel with nothing on top of my lovely wooden desk. Oops, <laughs> she says that she goes right off onto the desk. Um, okay, so when I cut these pieces of paper, I did. I was keeping them in order. This this piece is actually three different pieces, and I'll show you why. But for now, we're just going to put them on. I like to have the skinny little border, um, which also means there's less room for error. So focus, pay attention. There we go. Okay, now. The first one I made, I did fold everything up first and then went, oh, darn, I forgot to put the paper on. Um, and actually, one of them that I was making, I actually put the next layer on before I remember I hadn't put the paper on. Yeah. Um, it's just easier this way because this is in your way. And if you're like particular like I am about lining them up. Now, is this not just like the most gorgeous guy? It is. Okay, so now we're going to make a box. And this box is going to line up. So this, the very end piece is what's going to attach here. And before, I, before I tape on my desk again, you know, I always craft with this underneath. I don't know why I don't have it now. Um, so I'm going to put some adhesive, kind of stopped a little short there, on this tab. Okay, only on the very end one. Now, here's how we're going to fold this up the easy way we're going to fold this part in half. And this one I was actually paying attention now. I cut an eighth off instead of a sixteenth off. So we have lots of space here. So you don't want to line it up on that. You just want to fold it in half. So two of your scored sections are here and two are underneath. And all you have to do is lay it down like this and fold this over. Make sure your edges are lined up and it will be lined up square. Because if not, this is not going to be square. See, this is why I didn't put that down there. This isn't going to be square otherwise. But that's the easiest way to make it square. Fold this in half, lay it down, pop the other thing over, boom, square. Now the next one, uh, we're going to put on, we're putting on like this. And I realize now with my color of cardstock, it may not be the best choice, but I'm going with it. We're going to put it on here. Now you could leave this plain if you wanted to. And when I said put the DSP on, see, this is where <laughs> live is best because this is where you get to show that, you know how many times I've done this and how many times I've done the same stupid mistake? Yeah. Well, we just added to it. Okay, so I have to put DSP on these two pieces. <laughs> and that would have been a lot easier to do it before I had <laughs> glued it, but okay. Anyways. I, I prefer, like you could just leave it like this, but I prefer to have a little something behind there. So these two pieces that I cut off the back are seven eighths of an inch. So one of them is going to go in here. So we'll put that on quickly. Like I said, it might have been a little easier if it was flat. And then there's another seven eighths inch strip, which I cut off. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not the end of the world to do this. I just have to uh, get it in an angle where I can actually see it. And this dark green on dark green, that's a bit more challenging. There we go. So it's a good thing this folds down. Now, again, I'm just particular. So when you look at this card, you're only going to see this. This other piece here is going to be sitting on your desk. But when you fold your card flat like this, this like this straight piece here, this is what you're going to see. So to me, I don't want that to be plain, which is the reason I put one more strip on the very bottom. Now, that is totally optional. Um, I do not have a sh shortage of DSP in my craft room, believe me. So it works for me to put DSP. I could put DSP on the back, the sides, the inside, and I still wouldn't run out. Um, but it's more just an aesthetic for when it's first folded and when they first take it out to not see a big bare square. And again, actually that's easier to do it the other way. Okay, so this is the bottom of the card, but it's pretty. So now that we have these pieces on, this one is gonna go. So this one, because we want this to sit flat on our desk, this one is going to line up with the bottom and then centered in between the two. So I'm going to remember to put this on. Uh, and these, these papers are so pretty. Of course I ran out. Um, I don't see also. So we're going to be like heavy duty now, because now we're using the seal plus for the DSP. Uh, this paper is so pretty either side of it. Some of the sides are more cloud looking and some of them are more just like the whole scene. And no matter which way you do it, it's gorgeous. Like seriously, look at this sky. I wish I could paint that well. Okay, so this piece is going on here, but it's only going on an inch worth. Let me make sure I get this going the right way. Yep. See, I was gonna put it on upside down. Okay, so this is the, <laughs> this is the bottom piece. So I'm gonna, I like to, as you may have noticed, I like to uh, be very secure with my adhesive. 
I put it on all four corners. <laughs> so in this case, I just put two strips because I only need this much. And then I am going to do the same thing. I'm gonna, I'm using my thumb on here so that it can hit up. So it's not gonna be, if it's over, it definitely won't sit right. Um, so I'm kind of using it and I haven't actually put this card down yet. So my thumb is helping me from going too far off the thing. And then I'm gonna line it up in between those two. And then again, we're gonna, this is why it'll fold flat in the envelope because every time I go to push something on here, I'm doing that. So now we have two layers and then we have the same thing with the front layer, right? This piece was three by five and 15 sixteenths. And this one I might've actually cut right. So the same thing, instead of, when I made the card the first time, I did make it with two, here, I'll take the finished one. I did make it with two one inch squares, right? So both of these were the same size, which fun note, when I make my little desk set, it's probably gonna have a hidden chocolate compartment because when I was watching and it, like it was just playing in the background, but it, I pick up such good tips. She said something about it, it reminds her of a treat holder she made. So this size happens to be the perfect size to stick uh, Hershey's Kisses in. And then it also Hershey's Nuggets fit in there. And because I never put anything away, I have one of these cute little strawberry chocolate hearts on my desk. See, this is the beauty of not being able to eat chocolate. I can eat white chocolate, but the other chocolate does not, <laughs> does not go well. Um, I always have chocolate. And it never, I mean, it goes bad before it gets eaten. So I always have samples. Ooh, see, and if you put these at an angle, they'll fit in there too. So I'm thinking if you're making a desk set, this could be a stash. So if you were doing that, you might want to make two of them. They were both one inch. But in this case, I just wanted, because the, the layers were getting smaller, I didn't need the card to stick out as much. So I switched. This is a one inch by one inch by one inch square. And this one, I just changed it to half inch. But the theory is basically the same. So. I'm going to remember to put my paper on first. And this one, uh, because it's going on the front. Oh, seriously, I just I, I just about put it on the wrong side. So I was going to put it on here. See, this, is, this was not intentional, but I'm going to show you all the things not to do. This time I caught it in time. So when this folds up this way, so on the back one, this is how you want to do it. But on this one, it's actually going this way. So flip it over, it wouldn't have been the end of the roll. I would have just had to fold this the other way. It makes a difference if you glue it wrong though. So this one covers the entire front panel. So that, that's why you don't need to put anything extra. You're covering up a bit of this, but that's fine. Oh, I did put the paper on upside down. Oh, for goodness sakes. The beauty of the new um, adhesive. So I, I did love the snail, the original adhesive. Yes, there we go. I had the I had the flowers upside down, um, and it and it wasn't quite as strong. But it was like once you put it down, man, that was it. You had you weren't changing your mind. So this new stuff is a little bit stronger, but somehow in whatever formula they came up with, it is a little more forgiving too, because you can sometimes pick it back up again without ripping the card or the paper or anything. Is this not the prettiest paper? Oh, okay, so. <laughs> put this on the outside, then flip it over and we're rolling into the inside. So this one's only gonna fit one strip because it is only half an inch wide. But we're gonna do the same thing as we did on the other one. We're gonna, here's two squares, two squares. So we're gonna fold it in half. We're gonna tuck that little bit of a piece of it. That little sloppy. And then we're just gonna fold it over. And that's how you get whoop, square. It's a smaller square, but it's still a square. There we go. So now this one is going to attach to the front. So if it, if it's easier, if, if the, I guess the easiest way to make sure is the, the box of it is going to attach to the front. So this is the piece. So this is, I seriously do this no matter how many times I craft it. This is the piece I want the adhesive on. So when I go like this, I'm keeping this finger here to show me this is the piece I want the adhesive on. Now I will move it out of the way so I can actually put it on, but I will keep my finger there until I am ready to put the adhesive on so I don't put it on the wrong piece. So that's how quickly I can forget things. Okay, so now I have some adhesive on here and I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm gonna use my thumb again. Actually, in this case, I'm gonna use two thumbs and I'm gonna line them up and I'm gonna center them on that middle piece. And this one, when I folded it, 
I folded it down. So I could fold the whole thing up like this, but then I have the same issue <laughs> of this bare piece, but it's also starting to get too long for the envelope. So I folded this piece forward and I folded this piece back and I like the way it looked better. <laughs> so that's why I did it. And it will also fit in the envelope because that's important too. So we'll get out an envelope so you can see. Now I'm pretty sure if I had done this other one, it would probably still fit, yeah. Um, but my cards tend to be a little thicker than normal because I like to put some layers and some die cuts and some dimensional. Um, so I like to give myself a little leeway, but I just like the way this card looks better with one going up and one going down. But it really doesn't matter because either way they're gonna fold. So now we've got the basic structure of the card. Now, if I had been smart, which if nothing else, today's live has showed you that that is not always the case. Um, I froze again. Yeah, second. One of these times I'm gonna stop and start this camera and it's not gonna start again and I'm gonna be super disappointed. There we go. Um, so, <laughs> Yeah, it, I probably should have decorated this front panel before I put all the pieces together, but I didn't. But at least it'll fold flat, so I can, that's fine. Um, I have one more tip for you, speaking of fitting it in the envelope. But first off, here, I'll take my little mat out of the way. Um, do you see how different these cards look with just the different kinds of paper? And if I put like a light floral paper, or if I had made it out of this pale papaya, like, can you see how, oh, possibilities are endless. Okay, hey, so here's my little card that I want to decorate. And now I did pre-cut. So when I when I get a new stamp set and I go to play, actually I have a couple of things I'm gonna tell you here. Um, when I go to play, I tend to take the dies and locked up on the pin already. Locking up faster than it was before. So that, that worries me a little bit. I believe it is time to buy a new camera. Damn by one, we're gonna see if it will keep trying. There we go. Uh, I don't know how many more tries I'm gonna get at doing that. When I first buy it, I tend to take the dies and cut a whole bunch of little pieces out. Uh, this was left over from another card, but because I had, this was like a nice fancy die cut, I just didn't throw it in with the scraps, I guess. Um, but yeah, I tend to cut a whole bunch of these pieces because then when you're designing your card, it's much easier to you know, mix and match and play. So I always have lots, but in this case, I also cut some extra ones specific to this card. So I like, as I said earlier, I like dimension, dimensionals. That said, I, I have used apparently the last of the ones I had open. So let me just see here. Nope. I will just open some more and hope for them. They're not super noisy in the background while I do it. Um, so I'm gonna put dimensional on my card. I also like the look which I'm too busy getting the dimensional work to pick up my card. I also like the look of things hanging over the edge of the card. So you see like this and the cloud. By the way, this is the old cloud punch. There's a new one. I just didn't have it. I had this one. Um, but I like, the, I like the way they look when they hang over a little bit. You have to be very careful because if you hang them over too much, they're not going in the envelope. So in this case, we have a little leeway at the top. If I wanted something going off the top, I have a little bit of leeway. But as you can see from this, I do not have a lot of leeway on the sides to fit this into the envelope. So nothing can go past the end of this. So, and maybe this is the bonus to not attaching everything first, is now I can see exactly where that is. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna build my mountains because I like my mountains. These guys are on, these couple dimensionals. This is a little big. Even the mini dimensionals I cut in half. I, I'm going to dimension as many places as I can on all my stuff. There we go. Okay, so I have some dimensionals on this just to pop it up. I like to be able to, it, it lets you see a little bit more of the paper that you're about to cover up. But I just, I love the way the dimensionals change the look of something. Okay, so I'm going to have my mountains hanging off the edge. So my, my dimensional is in the middle here so that the dimensional is not hanging off the edge, just the, just the card stock is. Um, and I was just paying attention to the peak is where it is. So I want this to hang off the edge. But again, I got to make sure that it doesn't go past the edge of the car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this flat so that when I go to put this on, 
I can make sure that I am not past the edge of the card before I put it down. Because it's hard to move a mountain. <laughs> but boom, I'm here all week. Okay, so as it turns out, my entire mountain range is hanging off both sides. Now I knew it wasn't going to be too far on this side. This was the one I was worried about. So check that out. Oh, just love it. And then, yep, I'm adding more dimensionals. <laughs> I mean, at this point, the layer's already that thick anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to put that in here. You left me a good dimension. Maybe just a little too big. So, let's give that a little trim as well. Now, some of these little pieces here, like I'm not putting any dimension on the very, that's not even on camera, on the very skinny end of it. Um, because it's the, with this staying on, this might get a little, you know, pushed around a bit, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna be enough to tear the whole card off. There's three other dimensionals on here. And this one, I am going to intentionally line up slightly cockeyed. And because I know it, I can see behind me that I'm not going past, I'm not, I don't have to flatten it this time. I'm gonna put this going up the hill. There we go. Oh, with the trees. Now, I, I, I like to like, stagger my, try to balance out the stuff on here. So this is the way the grass cuts. I mean, you cut with the dye, it tends to, oh my goodness, with the frozen camera, it tends to kind of round the edges and make one side look better than the other. It's not that they, it doesn't look good the other way, it's just the, the way the dye is originally cut looks a little, a little more polished. So this is the way the dye is supposed to go. And it's kind of rounded this way. But I want I need the grass to go on this side because I've already got lots going on that side. So all you have to do, and you have to be a bit more careful when it's um, delicate. I don't know the right word. Uh, that's not the word. Detailed. When it's detailed like this, that you want to make sure that you're not going to bend your die all up. So in this case, I'm going to go this direction because I'm less likely to bend my grass. And all I'm doing is I'm taking my bone folder. And I'm going over top of it, and it's going to do two things. One, it's going to shine up the paper a little, and in this case, it's going to rip a little piece, but that's okay. And it's going to round down that edge. So where the other side is curling up, now it's going to round it down. Thanks, Mara. So I'm going to do this just so my grass is a little a little flatter, and it looks like it's meant to be on this way. And then, shocker, I know I'm going to add some dimensionals to it too. I'm going to single handedly keep stamping up in business by using as many dimensionals as I do. Alrighty, so now I'm going to put some grass on it on this side. Put some grass down. Now, the law of threes, where things just look better in the threes, look at how well I get on the camera again. Not good at being on the camera, but law of threes. Um, so, yeah, I, I have this one goes across the whole thing. This one's on this side, this one's on this side, but I have like three sections to it. And apparently threes are just more appealing. Oh, there we go. I was gonna say, I can't, can't believe I lost my pebbles. Now here's one of my, my other favorite projects or products um, is these pebbles. Oh, I love these pebbles. And yes, I'm gonna put three of them on. So in this case, I need to flatten this one and stick them down. So just, you know, amongst the grass, <clears throat> I need to have three. I like when there's different sizes. I like when there's different colors. Um, in this case, I keep, I keep looking at them because they're sort of a dark gray, a light gray, and a, and a suede color. And every time I do it, I'm like, do I put three of the same colors? Do I do it? I don't want to have three rocks the same. I, I end up putting one of each every time. Um, do I overthink my embellishments? Maybe a touch. But I do, when I pick three different ones, I do pick um, the different sizes of each. So we have the, the sort of short and stout of the dark gray, the skinny of the suede, and then the tinier one of the light gray. And we throw a little bit of rocks in the grass because there's always rocks in the grass. And because I love these pebbles and they're gonna be on like any outdoor card I make until I run out of them, which <laughs> given the stockpile, I'm not gonna run out to. And then I decided that I was just gonna somehow make this into a birthday card, but I hadn't actually got as far as figuring out 
um, where the birthday was going to go. And I think it's going to end up going there, which means I need to. Uh, okay, here I'll give you another. I'll give you another little trick. So I like to. I like to find the end sometimes, but lots of times I find it a little less fussy, but still, you know, has more of a finished look. If you just give them like a bit of a, an angled end. Now, <laughs> I have started with a piece of paper an inch and a half longer than it needed to be and practically cut the beginning of the letter off, trying to both get both ends to angle the same direction. So here's what I found out though. So I'm gonna cut like this and I'm gonna save this piece of paper from going flying. So here's my piece of paper I just cut off. Now, if I use this as my template on the other side, so I gotta figure out which way I'm going. Oh, no, I want this way. Okay, so I'm covering up part of the leather. That's fine because I don't actually need it. So I'm not, I'm not gonna cut that part off. I'm cutting this part off. But I'm using this piece I just cut off as my template. And it's a matter of deciding if you're gonna have going this way, this way. So I wanna go this way. And I'm using this template and because I lined it up on the edges and I'm using the same cut line. Now my edges are the same. Instead of being at different angles. And like I said, I have trimmed and trimmed and trimmed and, trimmed and just about run out of cardstock trying to make those go the same. And then I figured out just to use the one end as a template. All right. Here's what we have more of. Uh, and because this is long, I'm going to just cut up some of my little edges. Pieces, my brand new sheet of dimensionals. Put that there. Actually, you know what? Shocker of shockers. I'm not actually going to put dimensionals on this because then it will go a little bit into, it'll give a, one more layer because it's going to be between those other two layers. So every time I do this with a blue dot or a dimensional, I think of Diane Hutchinson and rolling it like a booger. <laughs> which I cannot do a, a proper British accent because it's so much better in a proper British accent than to say that. Okay, so I only put adhesive in the middle of this piece. Oh, you guys, the fact that I have not sworn on camera yet, the number of times this thing has stopped is surprising to me. Um, I only put adhesive in the middle part because I am going to hang a little bit of it off the edge, but I'm just going to stick it here, kind of a little bit under the grass. Because of happy birthday, where the P and the Y's on this go down, but the T and the H and the D, there's more up. I always think happy birthday looks crooked on a piece of paper because you're trying to line up like, so I love the idea that the grass on here is gonna fill in some of the space that's under birthday. And then I'm just gonna, whoop, there we go. So now birthday card, very scenic. <laughs> Rainbow card, very happy. Unlike Tracy, whose camera is really starting to annoy her. Do here we go. I have stopped and started this thing seven times, I think now. That's okay. Luckily, we're finished. I was gonna put a fence on, but then I just decided I'm not gonna put the fence on. You can't fence me in. And you're lucky that uh, I'm not gonna start singing. So there's my two different versions of the same card. Thank you, Dana. And, and like I said, other than the fact of me doing things wonky, um, it's a really easy card to make. It looks, it's like big impact when you first open it up. Um, I could show you them this way, but it, they don't really look as good that way from the top. But you will see that, and, and you just do a little fussing if it's not sitting perfectly flat. But they do, they, oh, they're just awesome. And then like I said, they just kind of fold up nicely into an envelope. So when the person pulls them out, they're going to have no problem figuring out how that card sits. And then, yeah, you can have it sitting there and looking at your little scenery on your desk. And so very quick to put together, um, big impact, lots of fun. And I, the next one, I, I don't know which paper I'm going to use, but when I do my blog on Saturday, I'm going to make something with this pre-cut and all ready to go um, piece of pale papaya. So you'll have a third version to look at um, on Saturday on my blog. But there you go. Ta-da! Uh, what did I say it was called? The triple layer double pop up unique fun fold or sidestep, which is when it goes this way, it's called a sidestep card. Oh my lord, with the camera. Um, the sidestep pop up card is what I actually saw this called when it was sitting sideways. So there you go. Thank you for hanging in with me during all of those horrible, horrible camera issues.
Uh, if you have any questions on these burning extravaganza, there's only like nine seats left and it's going to be a time, as Alan Doyle says. Uh, the Magna Board class, the Waves of the Oceans. Uh, sign up to be a demonstrator. You can get it earlier. You want to get some of these uh, uh, blends before you have to wait till May. Uh, the new paper pumpkin kits with the extra stamp set in it or any of the celebration. Let me know. And uh, I will happily answer your questions and order your stuff. <laughs> um, oh, Dan, I'm glad. I, and you know what? When you do, I would love it if you would post a picture of it, whether, whether it's here or whether it's on our team site. Um, I would love to see more versions of this because it is, it's just such a fun card. Can't wait to see it. Um, I am going to show you because I said team site, and that made me remember that I had put this card out <laughs> um, to show you guys earlier as well. Uh, I, I say it all the time, how much I love being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and the people I have met are like the best part of it. The supplies are great. I love to make this stuff, but the people. So the team that I'm on, Trailblazers, woo -woo, they're all nice, Nana. They're all nice. Um, we had our team meeting last week, and we made these cards. And our lovely team leader, Samara, smart woman that she is, had uh, included a set of these new masks. And then we all got to just hang out. This is the one I used. Um, <clears throat> and play with these and figure out how to use them. So there's the, like, in this case, you do like the inversion and then the, and hanging out as a team, playing, and everybody did different colors. And then we all posted afterwards so you can compare and go, ooh, next time I'm going to do that color. Um, it was so much fun. And again, I went with bright and cheery. Um, but trust me when I tell you, even just making stuff, doing it as a hobby, getting your supplies pretty cheap, uh, being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, best job ever. So I'll leave you with that. If you have any questions, let me know. Oh, I have a better thing to look at. But I'm scared to turn back to the other camera. Obviously, that was not the issue. T turning my <clears throat> excuse me, turning my face cam off did not help the freezing issue. So that's obviously not the solution, but at this point, I'm still not going to risk it. So I'll leave you with some pretty cards to look at. And uh, thank you guys very much. And oh my goodness, I went almost a full hour that time. Um, have a wonderful Tuesday. Let me know if you need anything. And uh, Thursday, I have a hockey meeting, so I will not be live, but I will have pre-recorded something. Um, hopefully, Mr. UPS guy come today and so chances are it's going to be something to do with what's in that box but i will let you know and um yeah stay tuned for some posts i got a fun challenge coming up i can't wait to see what people make on friday um on those posts and uh yes i hope everybody has a lovely week yesterday was valentine's day but i hope your week and your year continues to be full of luck thanks everybody have a great day <laughs>